All right, give you guys a quick little rundown on a CK35. This is a 3,100 pound tractor without any of the attachments on it. This one is about 10 years old and has 1,260 hours on it. So, um, 10 year review on this. Thirty-four horsepower, twenty-seven to the PTO. Basically, an oversized lawn tractor. I wouldn't call it much more than that. It can run an auger, and it has a backhoe attachment. All those are great if you're in sand. If you're in clay, probably gonna want to have to think of getting something heavier. Um, Three thousand pounds uh, doesn't take much to keep that hole out of the ground. Bucket, great for moving a little bit of dirt around, a little bit of gravel. Start loading it up with concrete, and you're gonna start doing a little bit of damage to this thing. But great little tractor for uh, a few acres, um, putting that uh, a few thousand hours on it. Great little machine. It is a three cylinder, 1.6 liter pre emission engine. These were mid 2000s, was when they came out, I think. That's the oil filter right there. Very simple, spin it off, put it back on for a new one. Oil fill is right there. Um, hydrostatic filter is right here. The hydraulic oil filter is down below, which is right there. The dipstick for the engine is right there. And the dipstick for the um, oil at the back is right here. The um, fill for the uh, back axle is right here. The front axle also has oil. And the level check is down here with the plug and you fill that with 8090 through that plug right there. Some of these models tractors have the final drives on the tire separate from the axle, which means that there would be a level plug on here somewhere. You'd have to line up the line, put the plug in the middle, and when the oil comes out of there, uh, you know you have enough oil. This one's a little low, so we are going to um, fill that up with 8090. The rad has a nice screen on it. Take this off, you can pull that out. It keeps things like mice nests from clogging up your rad. You might wanna pop your hood once in a while to make sure there are no critters in there because once they start eating into the wiring, it's gonna be a bit of a problem. Oil cooler, air filter, pop that off right here and just blow it out. Don't get too concerned about a dusty filter. Change that every thousand hours unless you're in extremely dirty conditions, but I wouldn't get too, too concerned about it. We got a block heater because it gets cold up here in the great white north. And then you've got your dash layout. A uh, couple small things that I've come across here is the, the engine won't shut off. And that's actually a timer relay that's underneath this dash unit. There's also a glow plug timer that sometimes doesn't go off and we're having that issue with this one, but it seems to be working right now. Glow plug light is going off, which is what it's supposed to do. Can't really fix it if it's not broken, but both of those, before you check or replace those, because they're about, uh, yeah, about 60 bucks US, uh, about 100 bucks US from our dealer, because that's the way things go. Um, check your key switch. The key switch is also 100 bucks. Our cost, but I'm sure you can find it cheaper on the internet. Spray that with some lubricant. Uh, take the back of it off and uh, put a little bit of dielectric grease on there. That might help. And also on the plugs on the glow plug timer and the um, engine uh, timer. Other than that, um, they're okay little tractors. We've also had it where the tractor wouldn't go into reverse. And that was the cruise control. And I honestly forget how to activate the cruise control right now. I think that's this handle here. Uh, don't quote me on that, but um, look in your owner's manual. If you put it into cruise control, it'll keep it at a forward speed, but cruise control will not allow you to go into reverse. So um, if the handle's forward, you can pull it off of that cruise. It'll go back to that setting and stay there, but it won't let you go into reverse. So there's nothing wrong with the tractor. Just um, be wary of that. Um, nice quick attach loader. Pull this pin, drop these arms, typical of... Uh, uh, quick attach loaders, you've got your marked quick couplers on the other side to take your hoses off once it's setting on the ground. I'm not going to do that because I don't have time. Grease fitting on every moving point, so one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight on both sides. There is also grease fittings on your inner and your out, or your outer and your inner tie rod ends. And then there's also grease fittings on your axle pivot, front and back. There's also grease fittings on your um, linkages down here, this one and the one on the opposite side which does either hydraulics, clutch, or brake, I'm not exactly sure. Um, lubricate these pins um, if you can. Things start getting sticky, especially if you don't have room to park these inside. This one is a hydrostat, and it actually weighs 100 pounds more than the shuttle shift. Uh, pretty nice that you can go whatever speed you want, forward and reverse. It's got live PTO. It does not have ground PTO, and I like the tractors with the ground PTO. Because with these ones you generally start augering holes with them and when you auger the holes and you get stuck you can actually jack up one side put the tractor in reverse and the auger will spin backwards um, these coyotes don't have that uh, the roll bar flops down um, lots of attachments you can put on the back it'll basically run most things uh, small rotor tillers good for bush hog things like that um, he uses this one for emptying skids out of trucks for a business that he has and these probably borderline for that probably out of the weight at the back because of that I don't think the tires are loaded the tires are definitely loaded <laughs> so he likes to put a lot of weight on the forks apparently so um, the front axle I, if you've seen my review on a Zeter 5340, I bought a, I think that one was about 65 horse tractor, which is a lot bigger than this. I was actually staying at that dealership that, so I could buy one of these at cost. And a, I think I was aiming for a 45 horse tractor that would have set me back about 20, 25 grand at the time. And I seen too many comebacks come back at that time with warranty that I wasn't interested in picking up one of these things. Since then, I think the quality has improved a lot. Um, I don't know what their issues are with emissions, but every manufacturer has that. So this would be a good, good tractor to pick up secondhand. They don't have the name that Kubota does, even though they're, they look exactly the same. I believe some of the engineers from Kubota actually helped design and build this. Um, what that means to you, I don't know but it does mean that the resale value of these is a little less than Kubota's. These Kubota's can't seem to hold their value a little better. So if you're buying new, buy Kubota. If you're buying used, you might want to check out one of these ones. I know that Coyote is expanding a lot more. They've gone into, I don't know, little farm machines with a little dump box in the back. Can't think of the name right now. They're also getting into mini X's and much larger tractors. At the time I left the dealership, their biggest tractor was a 65 horse. And if you go above that, it's actually a new Holland tractor painted orange with coyote stickers or they might not even have painted it it might have been a blue coyote and if you peel the stickers off it actually says new holland right underneath it a lot of manufacturers did that that doesn't mean that it's worse or good or bad whatever at the end of the day i think it comes down to the dollar figure so um not much else to do with this one uh we changed all the filters uh all the oil levels are up except the front axle we're just going to top that up Belt looks good, clean it out, maybe hose it off real quick and it's going back to the customer. This front relay here is your high beam relay. This one is your low beam relay. There are three relays on the firewall here. So the relay on the right is your pull-in relay for the solenoid on the injection pump. The center one is for the glow plugs and the one on the left on the passenger side, I would say, is your hold-in windings for that relay. So if you're cranking but it's not starting or it's not shutting off, check these relays and the, and the fuses under the dash first. It might be an inexpensive fix for you. We're gonna keep an eye on this glow plug light. Right now it's not, um, it's not acting up and I'm not gonna fix it if it's not broken because it's uh, 100 US is about 130 Canadian shot at a time plus time and labor. We're just gonna leave it alone for now. If the glow plug light stays on, it will eat your alternator and your battery because it takes a lot to run those glow plugs. So because of our glow plug staying on issue, it could just be as simple as a relay. Um, and these are funny little relays. So all I did was swap the plugs around. So now this is the glow plug relay. This is the hold-in relay. If the relay was sticking, then um, it would not shut off, but the glow plugs would work properly. If not, next time I see the tractor, I'll swap them back and we'll get in deeper with the um, glow plug timer. So um, yeah, here we go.
Nothing says class like having your tractor dropped off in a covered trailer. Sorry, one thing I forgot to mention on these is that the oil pan actually straddles the drive shaft. So when you're doing an oil change, make sure you get both drain plugs. Um, other than that, uh, comment down below as to whether you like these videos or not. Let us know your favorite little 30 to 45 horsepower tractors. Um, and definitely check out our review of the snow plowing video of the cases versus the Kubotas. Um, there's also a, and yeah, uh, maybe just for fun, check out the 275 horse challenger video as well. Um, thanks for watching guys. Stay filthy.